They may be small creatures, but sea urchins have become a big problem in our oceans. Due to an ecological imbalance, they're devouring marine habitats off America's west coast and elsewhere around the world, keeping other species from thriving. Help may be on the way from a unique partnership between scientists and a seafood company. John Blackstone shows us how they're looking to turn a menace into a meal. Off the Northern California coast, there's a crisis beneath the waves. The kelp forest, seaweed that provided habitat and food for much of life in the ocean, is gone, wiped out by an exploding population of purple sea urchins. So has this become an underwater desert out here now? This is mostly now a lot of rock, a lot of sea urchin, and not a whole lot of anything else. Since 2014, 95% of the kelp forests from San Francisco to Oregon have disappeared. At the Bodega Marine Laboratory, research scientist Laura Rogers Bennett has been studying the spread of the voracious urchins. Underneath is the mouth, and there are five white jaws in the center, and they can chew through rock. I don't have to worry about having them in my hand here, nope, though, with nope. the five jaws? Five jaws. And all those all If you spikes. were kelp, you'd be in trouble, but we can pick them up, no problem. Rogers Bennett says a warming ocean is believed responsible for upsetting a natural balance of ocean predators that has allowed the purple sea urchins to dominate, and not just in California. Now, there's other sea urchins around the world, but they're thriving too as the oceans have warmed. That's right. As the oceans have warmed, the urchins seem to be the winners, and they are really thriving and taking off which is bad news for the kelp forest. But to Brian Takeda, the CEO of a company called Urchinomics, all those sea urchins look like a business opportunity. So we convert them from an ecological pest to one of the world's most premium seafood products, or uni, in a matter of six to 12 weeks. So we're essentially monetizing the problem species that you want to get rid of. Sea urchins are considered a delicacy, particularly in Japan. So Urchinomics is working with the Bodega Marine Lab to collect urchins in the ocean and then fatten them up on seaweed pellets. Carl Menard runs what amounts to an urchin feedlot. Part of the question here, when you feed them these pellets, are they going to be delicious themselves for us to eat? So far, all indications are that they are of very high quality and very delicious. Turning a menace into a meal. That's exactly right. These urchins have been fed for two months and are ready for taste testing. Are you ready to try one? Sure, sure, I'll, I'll give it a try. We'll start you off small there so we don't overwhelm you. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's, it's the ocean. Yeah. Do so you want to get all this other tissue out? By next year, Urchinomics hopes to sell these urchins locally to sushi and seafood restaurants and to chefs looking to try new recipes. The Swan Oyster Depot in San Francisco serves sea urchin and welcomes a new supplier. You always have to have your eyes towards the future and other possibilities. Urchinomics is running similar projects in Taiwan, Japan, Norway and Canada, which are all losing kelp forests to urchins. These are restorative urchins, meaning that the more urchins you eat, the better the environment becomes. So it's a very different value proposition from all other seafood that we know of today. Urchinomics hopes Americans can be convinced to eat more urchins before the urchins eat up even more of a vital part of the ocean environment. For CBS This Morning Saturday, John Blackstone, Bodega Bay, California. I'm fascinated by how they get it out of there. It's so good. You've had it. I Urchin haven't had it. So You've had it? No. you got to try it. Right. Jeff's taking us out. Yummy, yeah. Yeah, we Sushi didn't trip. like when it moved. <laughs> kind of that was a little, that was a little odd. Well, you got to take that off. And you yeah. Get, yeah. yeah, but I think he was already cut in half when he was still moving. He was. Yeah. How about that? Nine lives of virtue. <laughs>